All right, so today I'm going to show you guys how to Plasti Dip wheels. Uh, there's 40 million videos on YouTube, so I said why the hell not I should have one as well. So I already actually did one. It looks pretty good. I'm using this Duplicolor Plasti Dip wrap, whatever they want to call it, whatever gimmicky name they give it. It's Plasti Dip, made by Duplicolor. Pretty good stuff. So one good suggestion to do before you do this, I like to take the paint and put it in a bucket of hot water so all the chemicals in there will apply a lot better when you actually spray it out. So here's the paint I'm using. Uh, there's a banana for scale. Just Yeah, there you go. So that's about how big it is. Uh, here's what the wheel looks like after using it though. It's actually really sparkly. I wasn't expecting that. I'm not sure the camera's picking it up, but it looks pretty cool. Um, by the way, just so you can see how big the wheel is. It's an 18 inch wheel. Now you can tell after seeing the banana for scale. So this should be straightforward. Wash your wheels. Make sure they're clean. You don't want anything. You want a clean surface for paint to apply to. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to wash wheels because that's pretty simple. Uh, just make sure they're clean, no brake dust, etc. Also, when you go to paint, guys, make sure it's a nice day, about above 60 degrees. It's about 70 degrees right now. Perfect day, sun's out, low wind. Um, and you want to make sure the precipitation is low. You can check that when you check the weather. If there's moisture in the air, the paint won't apply as well. It could run. It's plastic dip. You can paint the tires. I don't feel like going through with that, so I'm going to mask them off. You can mask them with tape, or I like to use postcards like this. Just like this, I used uh, flashcards, put it on in the inside lip of the wheel. It masks it off perfectly. Last thing you want to do, you want to mask your tire valve also. That you'll have to use tape for. All right, we're almost ready for paint now. Um, I'm not gonna prep the surface. So you could sand the surface of your wheel if you want this to really stick on there and be a really good finish on it. But the finish on this is kind of nice. I just don't like the color. I'm gonna paint it, maybe peel it off and powder coat in the future, something like that. So if you're not gonna, if you're gonna ever want to peel this off in the future, do not prep the surface. Make just make sure it's clean and that's it. And then. In the future, you can just peel it off. If the paint on your wheels now are scuffed up or they look like crap, I would go ahead and take an extra step, sand it down, get the surface rough. The paint will stick a lot better to it. Another thing I need to explain that you need to shake up the can of paint, get all the chemicals in there mixed around now, um, and spray on. Uh, look at your wheel. I have a mesh wheel that's a little hard to paint. Um, so I'm going to have to be careful with the spokes. And I need to be careful not to let too much run into where the spokes are and get but I need to still get paint in there so that way they're not unpainted. Okay, while I'm laying I first coat dry and moving onto my other wheels, that way I can multitask and go around all the wheels. So my first coat's on, I'm going to give it a few minutes to let it dry. I think it's recommended you do leave 10 minutes actually. So go ahead and do that, come back and do another coat. So this is something interesting to think about. An old auto tech teacher of mine showed me this trick when rattle canning stuff. Let it sit upside down for a while. Uh, the reasoning for that is, these sit on a shelf at an auto parts store for a really long time. There's lots of different chemicals and some are heavier than others. Those heavier sedimented chemicals float towards the bottom and the lighter ones move to the top. So even shaking, you don't get a uniform mix of all that equipment or all that, not equipment. <laughs> You don't get a uniform mix of all the chemicals in there. Even when you shake, you just get like this awkward mix of stuff. So in combination with letting it sit in a warm bucket and sitting upside down so the heavy chemicals go to the bottom and the light ones go to the top, they start to mix in a uniform pattern. Uh, it's big science for a small bottle of can or rattle can, uh, but it's something to consider, helps it out. I'm not sure if it matters for Plasti Dip, but for regular rattle can, it might help with this as well. It's worth a shot. All right, let me see if I can show you guys how I'm spraying. So start at the outer lip, go back and forth in a circular pattern and around the wheel, I do one diameter of it. Then I move towards the inside, do the same thing, and slowly move to the inside. Then I just do a quick spray across it. And then I do the same thing, but from lower here to get to the inside of the spokes, and go around again. Quick, short sprays about six to eight inches away from the wheel. Here's another thing to remember guys, don't spray to the point where you're holding it upside down. You hold it upside down, paint comes out and then aerosol comes out. What's cool about this 
is if you're in between drying coats, do that and it cleans out the tube in here and cleans out the nozzle. That way you don't get paint drying in this guy. If paint does dry in the nozzle and you try to use it again, sometimes it can splatter some dried up paint onto your whatever you're painting. If you have enough of this left over, hold on, product placement. If you have enough of this left over that you can use it another time, do that as well so when it's sitting on your shelf at home, that way you don't ruin the can. All right, last coat is on and that'll leave them to dry. And they should look like this guy over here. Looks pretty good. I actually painted those ones better. These ones have a little bit of running going on. Other ones are perfect. So for drying, I'm gonna let these dry overnight before I mount them, just to make sure they're really dry. I put about eight coats on here. And I used about two and a half cans. I bought four, just one for each wheel, but they're pretty solid right now. Um, I let about five to 10 minutes in between most of the early coats, and then the later coats I let about 10 to 15 minutes in between drying. Uh, they look pretty good in quality, actually. So we'll see how long they last at the test of time.